So, um, you know, I, I think it's important uh, and imagine that, you know, all of you have engaged in conversations about South African cities, urban areas, but it's worth repeating um, that uh, even though the Southern African region has had a long history of urban settlement and archeologists have more recently uncovered sites indicating uh, urban settlements prior to, the, uh, uh, prior to colonialism, uh, most of South Africa's cities are products of uh, colonialism and in particular capitalist development from the late 19th century. Uh, what that means is um, the kind of imagining of the city, particularly during the period prior to the democratic transition, uh, was deeply informed by ideas of colonialism, of racism, of segregation, uh, and in South Africa, uh, the idea of uh, the, the city uh, as separate from the rural areas, where the rural areas were regarded as reservoirs of cheap black labor and of migrant labor. Uh, it's important to note that you know, the idea of the South African city, and again, to remind you, I'm thinking particularly of Johannesburg, but this idea is in fact filtered through to most of the cities, uh, were informed by ideas, uh, you know, that were quite dominant in Europe at the end of the 19th century. So I'm talking here of ideas around sanitation, segregation, racism, uh, you know, urban control, disease, ideas around slum clearance, organization, ideas that came out of the kind of mid 19th century, uh, you know, uh, development of, of European uh, urban areas. And I'm thinking of the kind of Hausman development in Paris and how that influenced urban thinking in the late 19th century. So kind of cleansing cities, uh, you know, became quite important. And this is really crucial because uh, in the late 19th century, early 20th century, I think one could argue that the city was seen as the uh, as kind of citadels of white power and white privilege. 